Welcome. Boomer Tech Adventures honors grandparents and all the other boomers who play an important role in young people's lives. Grandparents Day is the first Sunday after Labor Day. It came into being on August 3rd, 1978 when President Jimmy Carter was in office. Marion McQuaid was the person behind the idea to create a Grandparents Day. Her original idea was that it would be a time when folks could visit their family members who were in nursing homes. But she came to think of it more as a time to pass wisdom down through the generations and also to share family history. So it's really a nice way to celebrate the multi-generational family. Now, I don't have any grandchildren, but I am great auntie Jill. I'm extremely lucky to have four wonderful, wonderful grandnieces and nephews. They're all bright. They're all talented, of course. Uh, they are all just generally good all around kids. They make me laugh. I've enjoyed watching them grow up. But fortunately, they're all over the country, so I don't see a lot of them or as much as I would like to. Now, I'm also extremely fortunate to have nearby four honorary nieces and nephews. And they also enrich my life and make me laugh. And these eight kids all share something in common. When I come to visit, or they come to visit me, they all ask, did you bring fudge? Over the years, I've made a fudge recipe that makes a lot, and I take it uh, when I'm going to visit, or I send it for holidays or birthday celebrations, and uh, because everybody likes chocolate in my family, it is very, very popular. So I thought it would be fun to share with you Great Auntie Jill's Never Fail Fudge. It is a variation of Mamie Eisenhower Fudge. For those of you who don't know or don't remember who Mamie Eisenhower is, there's a picture of her. She was our first lady between the years 1953 to 1960. Her husband was Dwight Eisenhower, and right after his inauguration, this recipe came out in a woman's magazine, and it was extremely popular for several reasons. Number one, of course, it's very tasty. Number two, it was easy to make, and you could buy the ingredients in the local grocery store and put things together in a short amount of time. So, I thought it would be fun to talk about it with you, walk you through the steps. It is fun to make with young people. You can't go wrong. There's no waiting for it to get to the right consistency before you stir in the extra butter and worrying about how much you're stirring it, etc. Uh, it's step by step, no fancy uh, ingredients, no fancy measuring. It's just something that's fun to do. And even uh, the youngest kiddo, as long as they can stand up next to the counter, can help. So let's get started. First of all, you need your ingredients. So four and a half cups of sugar. I didn't promise you that this would be a healthy recipe. One can of evaporated milk, one stick of butter, one 12 ounce package of chocolate chips, three bars of German chocolate, a pint of marshmallow fluff. Now what you see there is the tub of marshmallow fluff. You don't want that, you want the jar. That's twice as much in the picture, twice as much fluff as you need. And one teaspoon of vanilla. Now I love avoiding measuring. So if you buy the two pound box of sugar, and make sure you check at the bottom because they also sell it in one pound boxes. 
then that equals the four and a half cups of sugar. You don't even have to measure. So step one, you need a large bowl and you're going to break, break the German chocolate bars up into small pieces. And you can see them there in the uh, picture on the right. They're not tiny pictures, uh, sorry, tiny pieces, uh, but I think I break the, the bar up into force. You're going to add chocolate chips, then you want to set it aside. Now, no nibbling. It's awfully easy just to put our dip our fingers in there and pull out a handful of chocolate chips to chow down on, but you don't want to ruin the consistency or the flavor of the fudge, so no nibbling. Step two, again, a large saucepan, and you're going to combine the sugar, evaporated milk, and butter. You're going to mix them all together and then turn the heat on to about medium. You don't want it higher than that because you know that sugar and butter can burn. And you're going to stir constantly. You're going to stir constantly. I'm going to say that one more time. You're going to stir constantly. You're thinking it's never going to get to where you need it to get. But eventually you do get to the double, double, toil and trouble, fire, burn, and cauldron bubble stage. Don't worry though, no fenny snake or eye of newt. Just sugar, butter, and evaporated milk. After about six to ten minutes, depending on your heat, the mixture will come to a boil. Keep stirring. You're going to boil it for five minutes. Keep stirring. Do you notice I keep repeating keep stirring? It's really important that you do that so it doesn't burn. When the five minutes are up, you're going to take it off the heat and you're going to pour it over the chocolate pieces in the bowl. And you're going to stir. And you want to mix until all the chocolate pieces have melted and the mixture is smooth. So as you look at this picture in the upper left hand corner, you see I've just begun stirring. Uh, there's, it's not all blended, there's still chunks of chocolate. But down in the right, right hand corner, everything's melted and I have a nice, smooth, rich chocolate consistency. At this point in step five, I'm going to add that pint of marshmallow fluff. You can see I've just got it um, as a blob there. And then you're going to mix and you're going to stir and you're going to mix and you're going to stir. And you can see in this picture that just came up that the marshmallow begins to marble. Now, I've never tried it, but I bet you could pour it out this point if you liked um, the look and the taste of the marshmallow not being mixed in. Something you might try and let me know. But eventually, you are going to get it all blended, and you again have a smooth batter, and it's all one color, a rich chocolate color, and that's what you want. So the next part, of course, is you to pour it into pans. Look at all the fudge it makes. It's great to make for at the holiday time if you're going to take um, presents to people, you can put it in little pans, you can put it in a big pan and cut it. It's just terrific. And the kids, of course, that are making it with you feel that uh, they really accomplished something. And if you use several different pans, you can send some home with them. So, of course, the last step is to share in a joy. And you really don't want to keep this all for yourself because you'll be eating chocolate for the next six months. Now my stepmother Jane was terrific. I could send her all the fudge and she could discipline herself to eat one piece a day with her coffee after dinner. I can't have it in the house because I have no discipline where chocolate is concerned. So I always try to give it away. So again, your last step, I really encourage you to share it, but also enjoy it. So Boomer Tech Adventures would like to say once again, thank you to all of the grandparents, and the honorary grandparents for enriching our young people's lives. We all know that children can have cannot have too many people in their lives who love them and who will spend time with them. 
and uh, their memories made in their childhood that they will remember that will be with them forever and ever. So again, this has been Great Auntie Jill from Boomer Tech Adventures. And if you don't know about us, I hope you will check out our webpage at boomertechadventures.com. We have a blog, we have giveaways, good resources. And if you're a Facebook user, please check us out on Facebook. And if you see something you like, be sure to comment and share. So I hope you will try this recipe. And if not, I know you will enjoy time with your grandchildren and the younger people in your lives. Thanks for stopping by.